previously on Sailing Aquarius. So where are you going? Saudi Arabia. We are in Jeddah where we stopped last time as we were afraid we might not make it all the way to the Egypt. Last time about a week ago we did a Q&A and we touched on this subject a little bit but I think we want to talk a little bit more about where we go and how we choose the places where we go. That includes anchorages and countries. So let's start with the big ones, the countries first. Uh, how do we choose? I think you choose those because everybody goes westbound. You know, it's just the next country over. You might have a choice of, you know, slightly going north or slightly going south. It just depends on the seasons and the wind that you have. And that's what chooses, you know, you, you don't have a lot of choices what the next country is. Um, other than that, really, as Ken sa said, we always sail westbound unless it's a short distance hopping over but main thing is always the seasons we don't want to be in hurricane seasons we don't want to be in monsoon seasons uh, because it's very uncomfortable dangerous for the newbies insurance companies usually give um, latitudes where to where it's safe to be they give you a box and you gotta yeah. stay out of that box during the hurricanes seasons for example New Zealand and Australia why we pick New Zealand rather than Australia it was because of the costs associated with going into Australia Australia was going to be too expensive and we said that a couple times to people and they said no it's not it's not that expensive and it's not oh. that expensive but it's it was around six or seven hundred dollars it was going to cost us to get into Australia where it didn't cost us hardly anything to get into New Zealand so I felt that you know we would just go into New Zealand and then since Javilla hadn't been to um, Australia before you and your mom just flew over to Australia and had a good time yes the other thing that's kind of a big decision factor for us although now we are in beautiful Jeddah Yacht Club most of the time I would say at least 80% of the time we spend on anchorages um, it's our preferred place to be on the anchorage and also it's a way 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 cheaper way to be and uh, in um, Australia wherever you drop the hook it's full of things that try to kill you <laughs> or in New Zealand nothing That's you're true. more welcome to, to swim and jump in the water and enjoy so those it's just like so many variables but um, yeah, taking that with the seasonality and winds, also where you are in the map and going westbound, and also the cost of the country, of um, how easy to get visas, like Indonesia was very hard to get visas. Uh, we had to get the agents, but you know, it's such a big territory on our map, so we decided to get in and plus so we tried to get into the indonesia rally which didn't work that well but Maldives rally was awesome and i believe a lot of people did not enjoy maldives at least to our friends that we talked uh, because they didn't have a rally but the uh, majority of, of people that were participants of the rally they loved it if you want to do the maldives rally we'll leave a, a link below so you yeah. can sign up yeah Let's take a quick break and explore this promenade right next to us. That's the F1 racetrack right there. F1 like Formula One? Yep, that's it. Yeah, I'm liking Jetta. What other criteria we choose for the country? 
visas is usually not an um, issue for us, but it was, I just find out randomly that South African visa for me, part of EU yeah. citizenship, uh, citizen, it's hard to get. So I'm lucky, we were lucky that we chose this route, northbound, rather than uh, going South Africa. Yeah, it would have taken an additional three months to get Javila's visa to go into South Africa, or we would have had to make a non-stop and go all the way around without stopping, which pretty would much, be Pretty much impossible, smart. too dangerous, too, because I know some people have to wait even three months to get for a good window to go around south of uh, oh. Africa. Plus, not very many people have gone the northern route, so we're one of the first people that, you know, cruised up, we're cruising with the Zatara, so uh, these two boats are filming the whole thing. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, and the other thing, so it's route less explored, and the other thing, we knew we want to spend more time in the Mediterranean and uh, have fun. Yeah, so it all worked out to where we're going to get to see the Med. Yes, we didn't get to see South Africa or um, what's the other country that uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it's opened up yet. Oh, Madagascar. Madagascar. So we didn't get to see Madagascar either, but you know, we're getting to see a lot of other countries that we wouldn't have got to see, and we would have never gotten to see these countries had we not gone this route. It's rare occasion, but sometimes it's a decision making uh, condition is when we know that we're going to be leaving Aquarius, um, especially when we go visit a home in the US, uh, we need to leave Aquarius in a safe place. Usually it's marina or boatyard. This time it was exception when we left the uh, Aquarius in Tanga in the anchorage. But that is also something we pay a lot of attention when it's time to leave Aquarius. And we had somebody watching it the whole time. And plus, we had done a lot of research on the anchorage where the boat would be. It's a very safe anchorage with the yacht club right there. They have a lot of people watching all the boats to make sure nothing happens. And we hired somebody to watch the boat for us. So it all worked out. Yeah, it was perfect decision. So any other decisions, how we go decide to go to the country or not, like Saudi Arabia. And if you are not subscribed, please subscribe now, because if it's not Zatara, we would not be able to get in here as we did this time. So when you have a bigger channel, it opens more doors for you. And uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, we did not uh, have any like pre-existing uh, bad feelings about it. We just thought it's very difficult and very expensive. But obviously, it doesn't have to be the case. So we did have pre preconceptions about what it was going to be like here, and they were all bad. But we were so happy to find out that our preconceptions were all wrong about Saudi Arabia. And we are so glad we stopped yeah. there. And they also told why we didn't plan to stop in Jeddah in the first place. That's in the last Friday's video. But uh, yeah, this is just something, you know, where you go with the flow or roll with the punches and you end up in an awesome place. Yeah, it's actually been pretty good. So the number one yeah. thing is weather. Number two thing is weather. Number three thing is maybe how much it costs. And by the two first weathers, one of them is how the weather is going to be when you get there. And the other thing is how the weather is going to be to get there. So you have to look at the winds to get to the place. You have to look at the winds while you're there. So that's weather, weather. And then cost is a big deal. And what kind of anchorages they've got. Yeah. And the legal situation, again, visas, uh, whatever the current situation is. And another big thing that uh, you might not think of is once you get started on a journey, you're going to meet so many other people like we met up with Zatara. And then it's just like, well, you know, where are you going and where are you going? And then you mutually decide to go to a certain place. Yeah, because you do need a buddy boat. And then when you make friends, you know, when especially in Saudi Arabia, there's not many sailors. It's still nice to have, you know, there's always we help them, they help us and something, you know. There's so much you can have on one boat. So randomly one has this, the other has this. And it works really well. It's like a partnership in, in sort of way. Very true. Hey, let's go have some fun now and then we will talk how we choose anchorages. We are going for diving today. Visibility to 
today is crystal clear. How do we choose anchorages? Whatever has the best beach or whatever, you know, the rest of the, the boats that you're sailing with chose, you know, there's, there's a lot of things, but it's usually, you know, where you can just relax. How did you find out about Tanga in Africa? I was just doing a lot of research on where to check in and that's how we found Tanga. Tanga was one of the spots that boats could check in. You find out that that's the, the cheaper place to check in or the easiest place to check in. And it was pretty easy for us. And so that's why we ended up in Tanga. But the main reason we went to Tanga was it's written up as one of the safer places to leave your boat if you're going to leave your boat for any length of time. And in Dar, there was no place. And then if we would have gone to Zanzibar, Zanzibar would have been about $50 a day. Usually about anchorages, you find out from the other sailors. Uh, because it's anywhere you are in the marinas, whatever, sailors like to hang out and talk, you know, we have time when we don't fix our boats. Everybody likes to share their favorite spots. All sailors do. Have you been to this place? It's awesome! Oh, have you, you didn't go to that place? Oh man, you missed the best place in the world. Oh, you have to go! And it's kind of like these expectations kills your vibe where I mean, yeah, expectations. If you have, if you're, if you have these grandiose expectations about a place, it usually won't meet the expectations, and then you feel let down. It's. I think the most beautiful thing is when you travel somewhere, and there is a this surprise, like it opens like a beautiful blossom, like us coming here to Jeddah. You know, one thing after another after another, all positive experiences, and it just like it fills you up so beautifully where you come with expectations and one thing it's not up to your expectation and it ruins whole day so i would say listen to something but have very low expectations and don't do too much thorough research leave some space for surprises hopefully good one so my perfect beach would be a beautiful swimming beach a beautiful uh, bottom something to dive on snorkel on some sort of dock um, preferably some place to sit down and uh, chill with friends like a bar restaurant a yacht club anything like that and perfect also thing if it's a walking distance to town city somewhere where you can go do provisioning those beaches we would spend way more time so yeah, this would be a perfect anchorage for us. And of course, the cherry on top, nice company, nice friends. Yeah. And while we are here, we also will participate with the first Saudi Arabian sailor generation and be there for the diplomas. next on Sailing Aquarius. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do it now. Open more doors so we can do better videos. Yeah. That way we'll gain a little bit more, we'll get some new cameras and make better videos. What do you think? Well, for cameras and videos, they have to donate. YouTube is not going to stretch that far. <laughs> I want the Sony LX3, I think. That's what I want. Or XL3 or whatever one it is. It's a cinematography. I know this isn't going to make it to the, the prime prime time but that's what I want I'll put it after the the all the subscribe buttons <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yeah, you're just gonna like, the bloopers. 